Hey, what's up? It's Peter Vack from Love Life on HBO Max, and you are watching The Arroyo Show. The differences between Jim and Sarah, I think, at, at when the show starts are becoming even more and more apparent that Sarah doesn't and isn't ready for the kind of um, settling down adult commitment. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Brandon Arroyo. This is The Arroyo Show. If it's your first time here, please give it a thumb up and a subscribe. What a guest we have on the line for you today. Peter, his career started in New York, found himself out in Los Angeles searching for his pants, and now he's back in New York giving some dating advice to Anna Kendrick on HBO. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm great. What's up? How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us today. How's the quarantine life treating you? It's good. You know, uh, it's had its lonely moments, moments of introspection recently with, you know, we've been, it's been a nice to have this, uh, a movement to rally behind and, and feel people's energy around that. But yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Peter back on the line right now. One of the stars of Love Life available now on HBO Max starring Anna Kendrick, Sasha Compare, Zoe Chow, and of course Peter Vack portraying the role of Jim. Anna Kendrick's Darby in the journey from her first love to her lasting love. Peter, for those headed to the app for the uh, this weekend to binge watch, how was your time portraying the role of Jim? It was great. I mean, the cast that you mentioned was is so stellar and the creators of the show are incredible. It was really a dream come true. I mean, Anna Kendrick's really one of our great movie stars of this age. She's so effortless in her work and charming and working with her was awesome. Zoe Chow is the same and Sasha is the same. They're just fabulous, grounded, real, professional uh, geniuses. So it was so incredible to get to show up every day and work with these awesome women uh, i was very very blessed to get to do it and yeah we had we had a lot of fun i mean we were on location in new york where i'm from uh and when you get along with the people you're working with it really the work becomes effortless I was going to say, every generation seems to have that sort of group of New Yorkers in the dating scene, whether it be friends back in the 90s or you look at How I Met Your Mother in the 2000s. You guys had that opportunity to take part in a role like that. What's that like for you to be in a series that is like this, something that historically, you know, is, is something that's really enjoyable to take part in? Yeah, it's fabulous. Um love and romance and questions around dating are uh, it's it's an eternal subject i mean as long as humans want contact we always will there always will be movies and shows and books and content uh dedicated to unpacking all those issues and exploring them so i just feel happy that yeah i I think if, if our, our show does have a chance to be uh, in conversation with those other shows, and that's awesome. How would you describe Jim? Jim, 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 like, it, it really is a guy who wants a traditional life, you know, a normal, a normal life. Those, those were, I mean, what is normal? We, there is no normal, but, you know, Jim is a guy who desires a, a house, a wife, and kids and his issue and, and and he and sarah have an incredible relationship they do and they've been together for years but as is the case with many couples who have had a long and, and good successful run at romance it is becoming frayed and thin and the differences between jim and sarah i think at, at when the show starts are becoming even more and more apparent that sarah doesn't and isn't ready for the kind of uh, um, settling down adult commitment. She's still wanting to hang on to her identity as a, a party, as someone who parties and has fun. So, yeah, I mean, I think Jim, as Jim, I want uh, 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 the traditional family unit, and it's 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 figuring out how to negotiate our conflicting desires that are that is part of the engine of what makes that storyline run what you and yeah and also a sweetheart i mean jim's like just sort of a nice sweet guy he's there for his friends he 
I mean, I think he's someone who defines himself uh, in relationship to those around him and the community that he's in. And his friendships are, and his relationships are the most important thing in his life. I think that's a, I think those are really good qualities. In fact, I, I always really like finding those in others. It's, you don't always find them. <laughs> what are some of your first memories of all of you being together, you, Anna, Sasha, and Zoe? Was it at a table read, or when was the first time you guys all... Well, yeah, the table read was a great moment. I think we maybe had all met individually, but I remember sort of stepping out of the van, going into the venue where we can do the table read, feeling like, wow, this is going to be great, and then everyone arriving and hearing all the voices for the first time. It really is special because uh, it's the first image you get of the show coming together to become a... Uh, product uh, um and yeah i think as soon as we, we we started hanging out we we could tell that there was a friendship chemistry that we, we didn't have to affect that was actually there and which is so nice you can see the show love life right now on hbo max with us right now peter vack who portrays the role of jim peter dating in new york city seems like a dream and a nightmare all at the same time you were born <laughs> in nyc went out to college in la what tips do you have for dating in the big cities let's see what tips do i have for dating in the big city um well i think Is it as hot and cold as it's as people yeah, think it I think is? It really, I think it really is. I was I was gonna say something like I think the best bet is to just like be gentle with yourself and other people, and and and, and always to really really weigh. You know, I think part of what, what what gets people is that they they don't actually spend time to get to know who they're with. They they only look at their the pr the projection of their fantasy onto the other person um which can be nice and a lot of the times that projection of that fantasy is like the engine that sort of sparks a, a new fun period of like the the what do they call it the honeymoon phase right but i think if people really in the big if anyone anywhere not just in a big city like really wants to find love they need to make sure that the person they're dating isn't the person they think they're dating in their head, but actually the person in front of them. And I think if you ha are actually seeing a person and not your fantasy, then, and you like that person, then maybe you have a shot and they like you, then maybe you have a shot. But we get into issues in relationships when we're really dealing with fantasy life. And that's fun and fine, and everyone does it. And if you're doing it or you catch yourself doing it, you're not like a criminal. You're, or you're not, and you're not like, uh, you're not doomed to fail in relation. You're not like a relationship fugitive. <laughs> but you would be better to really get to know the people that you want to, that you think you love, before you decide you love them. We're coming up on five years since the South by Southwest release of I Believe in Unicorns. Uh, when you look back on that film, and since then, Natalia Dyer has sort of switched roles with the position that you had at that point, which was the, the young 20-year-old taking a, a movie with the you know, 16, 15-year-old in that sort of mentorship role. What memories do you have of Natalia from that film And uh, when you look back on it five years coming now? I mean, she's really one of the best actresses I've ever worked with. Uh, she That was her first role, uh, I believe, in Unicorns. And she's a, a true natural. I mean, she's a really gifted artist, somebody who doesn't have to, who, you know, the story just lives in her always. And that's what makes her so compelling on camera. She doesn't have, she knows how to deliver the characters in her life without effort um i feel like i learned a lot from her on that movie just watching her be and you know we had so much fun you know that was one of those indie movies we didn't know that people would love it we didn't know it was going to go to festivals it was it really was such a pure fun artistic experience that film uh big shouts to leah mayerhoff the director uh jaron blass the cinematographer God, all many of the other names escape me now since it was some time ago. But yeah, Natalia's great. She deserves all the all of the acclaim. I can't wait to see her do even more and and deeper roles. And hope we get to do another movie again. 
<laughs> when you look at your career as a whole, it sort of seems like something that you were almost born into. Your family is really deep into the entertainment business. What difference does that make, and what are you able to take away from having you know, other people around you all the time that are also in the industry? Well, interesting. You know, my parents actually, like, aren't. They, they are and they aren't in the industry. My, my mother is not. She, she's a, a fan of, of cinema and of acting, but she's not in the industry. My father was an actor when he was a young man, and then he changed careers a number of times. He's in the restaurant business, and he made indie films when I was during my childhood and early adolescence. And it was important because it it did it it showed me that like a, a like a civilian could just take it upon him or herself and and make a film, and that was huge for me because I've done that in my life because I've seen my father. But it but my parents weren't in the industry in a way that they could actually help me professionally, but but spiritually and energetically, they were always so supportive. And seeing my father do his own artistic journey that wasn't something he did as a young man it was like a it was like a, a later in life career it was very inspiring and yeah i mean i i am lucky because i always knew i wanted to act even when i was a child and that is i don't know why i actually don't remember why i decided i wanted to do it and i i don't i, I really am not i i forget what the motivating factor was it just was always something that i did so yeah that does give someone something of a leg up I'm, I'm loop maybe what's the question again remind me of the question now i'm just thinking about <laughs> i say when you're in that sort of a situation where there are people around you that are also in the industry how does that help like what does that do to it just being familiarized with the environment i think what it does is it 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 it, allow, it you see that it's possible i think so so much about achieving anything in a lifetime is knowing that the goal is even possible because you know you you can you can think ah shit you know i'd want to build um a bridge but if you never if you had no idea how it's done you might not know how to do it but if you grew up in a bridge building family then you know how it's done and and it's not such a shock that when you're an adult you're building bridges so similarly for me you know we to grow up in a family that was always listening to show tunes in the car that took us to great movies my father and i would see movies that were inappropriate for a little boy to see at the time but you know sorry dad it didn't scar me it made me want to act it made me want to make films and i think he knew it i mean it was just like exposing me and my sister to art and acting and shows and cinema just just and saying hey if you want to do this you can and letting us go to summer camp where we where we got to do musical theater and plays and just never saying oh that's impossible you can't do that that is a huge that's really building a door for a kid to walk through and 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 saying you know this path you can take it so that that's everything and and you know that's what i th think we would like to give i mean we would like to give that to all the kids. Every we would like for all kids to know that all things are possible because just the possibility is sometimes what allows the the goal to coalesce into reality. Peter, as we begin to wind down here, the show Love Life is on HBO Max. If you could give that final elevator pitch, that little twenty second, this is why you should go watch the show. What would that be? Well, I think if you ever felt like you wanted to find your soulmate but you didn't know where he or she was and you were are interested in seeing sort of an amazing deep dive into someone's relationship life then you got to watch love life on hbo max starring anna kendrick you won't be disappointed peter thank you so much for giving us some of your time today we really appreciate you sitting down and chatting with us and uh what a privilege. great to meet you buddy